welcome friends uh, welcome once again in my youtube channel in my previous video i have explained you about uh, hvac ducting and how the ducting needs to be installed what are the ways what are the checklist which we need to follow was explained continuing the same journey ahead in today's video i am going to talk a little bit on piping the chilled water piping condenser water piping uh, which is related to hvac systems so this video is going to be short and, and more valuable before i move ahead i request you to please subscribe my channel and spread it among your friends so we are talking about good installation practices for hvac piping this is the topic of the day welcome once again piping systems are critical when it comes to the central ac air conditioning systems and you can see these photographs you will hardly find such installations this installation will give you a pleasure a satisfaction and if you follow such kind of installation i think this is the benchmark which we need to look at in, when it when it comes to hvc piping so hvc pi piping the basic document which we follow is the schematic the chill water schematic or the condenser water schematic which gives you what are the equipments involved what are the tappings uh, what kind of valves fittings which are required to complete a piping it's not only a laying it has to be properly managed in terms of valves the sensors the temperature gauges and all other things which you want to record uh, from the chill water as well as whatever you want to control so balancing walls the non return walls the strainers everything comes in and this gives a clarity of what is to be done when it comes to chill water piping and this is uh, the hvac engineers guide so that he can move ahead and do the piping further this is another example of similar schematics where you can find all these connections these are chillers pumps then we have cooling towers here what are the connections what are the walls then we get typical connections for chiller package for air handling units for pumps for expansion tank for fan coil units everything is recorded so this becomes a guiding document for us to start chill water piping now chill water piping typically is made out of ms pipes there are i standards so msc class is the heavy class uh, which is used for pipe dia up to 200 mm dia and beyond that we use is 3589 for pipes that are beyond 200 mm the thickness can be varied and the specification needs to be looked at before you procure these pipes generally b class pipes are used for piping supports or drain piping where the pressure rating is very low pipes are generally available in 6 meter length and these are standard pipes when you need 12 meter pipes this can also be arranged but generally 6 meter pipes are available how do we know whether these pipes are of which class generally c class is being coded with the red color so this is quickly you can find out whether the pipes are right or wrong when the pipes are come to side what we need to check we need to check the thickness of the pipe also we need to check the length of the pipes there is a tolerance in the length of the pipes it can range from 5.9 meter to 6.1 meter we also can look at as a set class of the pipe based on the based on the color code we can also look at whether the surface quality is proper or not uh, the straightness of the pipes you can see you can see on the right hand side there the table which use the pipe sizes and the related is standards in certain projects seamless pipes are used up to 40 mm dia and it depends upon specific in the specification now what are the installation practices generally pipes are welded as per is 10234 and we generally follow the bud joints right we also look at how to look at the fittings like elbows the the reducers the tap off the t's all the things have to be properly as per specification and this this can go hand in hand with the piping before you start as i said one is schematic second thing which you can look at is the layout drawings which you can have proper routing of the pipes there is no clashing with other services we have proper routes defined then you have to cut the lanes at required lengths and as i said bud joint is what is followed you can see the bud joint is like this there is a bevel and below this there is a filler goes in this is how it is explained 
and there's a bevel here and the filler goes in and finally the joint looks like this so this is a complete picture of how it has to be done and generally welding has to be vertically down how this filler has been put here then look at how these are welding joints the support fabrication again will have specifications governing it or we can also do a stress analysis of the pipes to know where is the exact stress coming from there and that's for that stress what is the pipe the support size this also can be looked at generally pipes are hang from ceiling from the columns or the, from the floors depending upon the site situation this is the welding procedure wps and i said is10234 which is generally giving how the welding process has to be done and whether the welders are qualified for this kind of welding is very important so you can see the characteristics in the table then how we go ahead with the welding vertical fill direction of the welding time lag between the passes removal of lineup cleaning of power grinding or you can use brush which is required all these things are properly mentioned this is the process we need to follow as i said stress analysis is another subject generally in specific it mentioned that support distance will be 2 meters 3 meters depending upon the specification of the specification the best way to do is to have a stress analysis done. and there are software which are available which will give you where exactly is the stress and where and where we need the right support otherwise is goes if you go by the specification the supports may not match as per the stress as i said the purpose of this is you know when the piping is routed and support it so that there is no damage occurs either to the pipe or associated equipment because pipes are connected to various equipments because of thermal expansion or contraction or load resulting from wet pressure earthquake anything so all of these combinations can be used for the stress analysis and there are softwares to look at what makes piping critical one is the temperature of the of the water or fluid which is in the pressure the occasional loads probably a seismic load or a wind load if it is you know on top of the building the wind load becomes very important and the dynamics of the flowing fluid because fluid will have its own dynamics what causes the stress in the pipes one is the live load the load of the piping itself then we, we will have line pressure which will have water or any fluid which will go through with a certain pressure restraining of pipe expansion and thermal gradient discharge reaction so when we start an equipment there is going to be a reaction for some time some amount of time seismic as i said depending on the zone we can look at it wind load as I said and again dynamic of the fluids you can see the pipe is connected here but you can see the stress coming on the pipe is like this so this the stress will be shown as per this as per this analysis and there are various ranges of stress you can see the pipes which is you know anchored here and here will have stress like this so it can undergo such sort kind of stress so what kind of supports are required probably this kind of support to to take care of the stress that is very important you can see some of the supporting system over here it depends upon stress analysis there is a typical chart over here for the piping sizes the details of support member the base plate the anchor size this everything can come from the stress analysis otherwise we generally follow 2 meter 3 meter which is given in the specifications everything is noted over here another the vertical shafts again will have different kind of stress so we need to anchor it properly with proper supports with the proper fasteners and with proper brackets similarly like this so there are various ways of supporting but the input can come from this stress analysis and this is the chilled water piping that's why you can see a pipe which is od over here and all around it there is a insulation and there is a puff saddle which is to support the chill water piping on the supports because of the condensation some of the photographs some of the photographs you can see some of the photographs here here vertical pipe photographs horizontal pipe photographs the supportings the more supporting uh, this is another thing which generally we keep the support at the elbows but the stress analysis will tell you whether you require support here or here and how the support has to be you can see for this pipe there is a, a mother plate which is welded to the mother pipe so it is coming out of the main pipe and that is welded and from there we have welded another pipe and since it is going to be chill water pipe there is going to be puff bed saddle over here and the pipes are supported like this so different ways of supporting but you should know what kind of supports are required you can see over here again you can see some of the supporting systems some of the supporting systems these are called 
cradle supports which will take care of your thermal expansion as well as the movement of the pipe horizontally because of the dynamics of the fluid. Otherwise, you can see some of the supports which are done. Um, somebody is putting a wire over here, somebody is putting again a metal wire over here, but this is not the way to support. So, I have shown you some of the good photographs as well as the bad ones and you can see how beautifully it is taken care of. Another important thing is identification tagging. So, when we look at chill water pipe, condenser water pipe, there are codes which says what kind of identification we have to use. This is arrow over here, you can see chill water supply, there is a band and there is a color. You can see hot water systems, all these are available in standards or in a specification. Similarly, walls are tagged accordingly. This HVAC 192, there will be a table which will tell you this 192 is for what. So, this is properly correlated with the as built drawing and your identification. Some of the photographs, but you can see some of the bad installations for the piping. It looks horrible, you can see over here, some kind of bad workmanship. Anchor fastener plays an important role and when we support the anchor fastener, always try and see that we have additional fasteners to take care of any problems. So, if you have a fastener which is designed to take the load and if it is only one fastener, it is important to provide another fastener so that if this fails, this will take care of it. Chill water piping are already supported on a Gutties, single gutties are used for horizontal and double gutties are used for vertical pipes. We always use clamps to hold these pipes and when it comes to condenser water piping, normal clamps are used. When it comes to chill water piping, a specifically designed clamps are used. We have to also see how tappings are done, how the uh, drain, plugs, drain plugs are provided, how the air vents are provided. This has to be done at site with proper guidance and this guidance has to be given to the people who are working at site. Now, there are two things which I want to see here. One is when we take out the tap of the pipes from the uh, mother pipes, you, you can see over here, this is the pipe and from this the tap off is taken. Now, this is a T-joint. However, when we take pipes, when we have smaller pipes, the T's are there in the market. You can get fabricated T's which have to just weld from one side over here and another side over here and you can install it. But when the, for the higher size, what we have to do is when we take a tap off from here and we puncture the mother, mother pipe, we have to strengthen this and this is called reinforcement pad. This is another good practice so that the pipes doesn't become weak from where you have taken the tap offs. So otherwise, these are some of the tap offs like thread relates and the socolates which are available in the market which can be used for smaller dye pipes. This is a table which will tell you, you know, for tap off size. Like this is a branch size over here and this is a header size for 15 mm pipe. We can see a socket will T, a socket will T. This is the socolate, right? This is the butt will T, and this is the wherever we need reinforcement pad, you can see a reinforcement pad position. So, this is a guiding table to look at how we take out the tap offs. It is important to avoid number of elbows because that will create additional head on your pumps. Always use this reducer to avoid cavitation. Ensure the scale is removed once the welding is done. Always use head of side joint to mark the welding joints. Use proper fitting as I said. Correctness of support is extremely important. Wear pad is another uh, aspect which you know this is for the condenser water piping. When we support this pipe directly at wear, there is going to be some friction and there will be some erosion over here. So what we do again here, we provide another layer of the plate which is coming out of the mother pipe so that it becomes a, it gives a strengthening at this point of time. We have to provide flushing loops. We have to provide flanges or a dielectric coupling near the connection so that the connections are easily taken out. Some of the photographs over here, this is a dielectric coupling, flushing loops and we have to protect the pipes. And this is very important, otherwise you will get everything in that pipe. You, you can look at these photographs, there are glows inside the pipes and it, it becomes very difficult at the stage of commissioning. So we need to protect the pipes and see nothing is there inside. These are the photographs of buried chill water piping. This is another way to avoid welding the, with the groove fittings are available which can help to expedite the piping however the costing needs to be done properly. When we do the entire piping the testing has to be done and generally testing is done 1.5 times of the working pressure and that is for 24 hours time. The another quick way of doing is is the DP test where we apply a penetrant over here and if there is a crack then what we do is we apply the developer and the developer after inspection will find if there is a red sign over here, 
there is a crack. There are some of the good practices which we have to look at. One is the how do we store the pipes? This has to be done properly. How do we lift the pipes? Generally, the pipes below 100 mm have to be lifted manually, and when we lift manually, there is this chair shoulder pad so that the pipe doesn't rest directly on the shoulder of the person. There is a shoulder pad which takes care of it and takes care of that load. We can use the mechanical lifters like they are shown in the photographs. Ready made fittings are available, and when it comes to piping, and specifically for the tap offs, it is better that we do it off site. We can take the measurements and do it off site, and it will be a good because we are doing everything at site is becoming issue, and the, it has impact on quality, safety, as well as the productivity. Whenever we do hot work, because this is related to hot work, please ensure that we are away from the combustible material. As per standard, 35 feet is the minimum distance which we require. You know between the co the combustible material and where the hot work is getting performed. There has to be a fire extinguisher, and it is recommended that the people who are doing the hot works are provided with the fire blanket jacket, which will take care of any exposure to the heat. These are some of the photographs. This is the work which is getting done. Hot work. It is covered by fire blanket so that the the sparks are not out of this blanket. If it comes, there is a Fire extinguisher here and there is a fire watcher here which takes care of if anything goes wrong where it can. This is the fire blanket which is on the top. However, you can see some of the problems which generally are faced at site. The kind of welding machine, the kind of cables and the way uh, we handle the cylinders, the oxygen cylinders and other things. This is a small checklist for piping which covers most of things whether the drawing is there, whether the mock-up is approved, whether this specs are followed, whether the rights practices or the best practices are followed, everything is mentioned in this checklist. This can be checked when the piping work is done. Another element of piping is copper piping, which is generally used for DX systems and the VRF systems. Now, this is some of the photographs on top of side. We have to use the right size of the pump piping. Generally, the support distance, again, it varies here. The stress analysis doesn't come much into picture, but there are supports which have to be done adequately. And wherever required, whether the joints, whether the diversion, those supports are required. Use of rubber support instead of wooden gutties because mostly I have seen the pipes are supported wooden gutties. Wooden gutties get eroded and get damaged and they get out of that place. Rubber is the good material we can use. Brazing quality, again, nitrogel wine brazing is another important part when we look at copper piping and proper supportings. And when we do this piping, how do we cover that piping is very extremely important. You can see some of the photographs. This is the brazing over done, the Y joints. But look at the horrible piping, which you will be ashamed of. Another piping, good photographs. These needs to be covered when they are exposed. Otherwise, they, the entire thing will get damaged. So this is what I wanted to tell about piping. I can come out with more and more such videos, which will be valuable for the team who are actually executing HVC project on the ground. The best way to predict future is to create it. And when it comes to quality, quality is always a result of excellent work without compromise. Please follow me on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And if you have any questions, you can write back to me on YouTube and I will reply it. Thank you very much for your patient listening.